beautiful audience we have here tonight. You are the most beautiful audience I've seen today. So my name is Richard Parr and when I was young I had a, a row with my mum and I said I'm leaving home and she said fine I'll get you a suitcase just remember you're not allowed to cross the road so I never left I'm still there now age 35 I am allowed to cross the road though now, holding mummy's hand. <laughs> so obviously I've been doing this stand-up comedy course and I've been telling people, such as my brother, and the thing is when I tell them this they say, why do you think you're funny? And I say, no, that's why I'm doing a stand-up <laughs> comedy course. Because when someone does like a first aid course, you don't say to them, why? Do you think you're good at saving lives? Do you think you're going to cure cancer? You just don't do it. If someone says to you, I'm doing a dog walking course, you don't say to them, why? Do you think you're good on all fours? You just don't do it, do you? So, uh, I'm just going to make this right a minute. Another thing I've been thinking about recently is why don't we use the phrase two left hands? We use the phrase two left feet for, say, a bad footballer, me, or a bad dancer. Also me, clearly. But we don't use the phrase two left hands. Now, I think that's handsist. <laughs> or is that flangist? Flange. Anyway, if we were... If we were to use the phrase two left hands, what would we use it for? Would we use it for someone who's not very good at, at, at throwing? Oh, no one survived that plane crash. Would we use it for someone who's not very good at clapping? Would we use it for someone who's bad at masturbation? Don't worry, I'm not going to demonstrate that. Don't worry. Don't worry. <laughs> Although, it does remind me of a story growing up. No, not that. Come on. Well, actually, I was, I was walking home from school one day, and the, the school bus goes by, and on the top deck, this, this boy, he does this symbol at me, which I, I'd never seen before. So I retaliated with what I thought I saw. <laughs> the next day, the, uh, the boy comes up to me and says, You're a wanker. You don't even know the wanking sign. I said, Surely that means I'm not a wanker? <laughs> now, I know we've all got to earn money. You know, I know we've all got to have a job, but there's one profession which just really gets my goat. Toilet attendants. <coughs> what is the point of them? You know, the no spray, no lay guys. Because <laughs> look at these arms. Look at the size of these arms. They are massive. They are huge. I could be one of those inflatables outside a car dealership. <laughs> I could be on the advert, you know, strips coming off a cheese string. I could be something like that. So I don't need help reaching for a paper towel. I can reach it myself. I'm not going to pay you a pound for the privilege. And give me more than one sheet. You don't work for Greenpeace. You haven't just saved a tree. 
So we tell our kids, well, we teach our kids to go to the toilet by themselves. And all of a sudden, we turn 18, and there's a man in the toilet <laughs> helping us. <laughs> we tell our kids not to talk to strangers, yet all of a sudden, we're in a toilet talking to a strange man. We tell our kids not to take sweets from people they don't know. Yet in the toilet, there's a man handing out lollipops. <laughs> I don't need a chupa chup. I'm 35 years old. <laughs> and the thing is, I don't know if you notice that certainly in the men's toilets, these guys have, have their lyrics to lure you in to get your aftershave or perfume from them. And they have these phrases. I don't know if you've heard them. They're, they're ones like, no soap, no hope. <laughs> no splash, no gash. <laughs> yeah, ugh. And no Armani, no punani. <laughs> but apparently, this doesn't happen in ladies' toilets. And... I think that's sexist. Yes. yes! And clearly as a man of gender equality, I think that the ladies' toilet attendants need some lines as well. So I've come up with a few. <laughs> no Joe Malone, you're going home alone. <laughs> no Prada, he won't get harder. No Dior, you'll smell like a whore. <laughs> no flower bomb, no chance of dom. <laughs> no Paco Rabanne, no big juicy wang. <laughs> and finally, no CK1, nothing up the bum. <laughs> Sorry, Mum. <laughs> Just before we go, I want to say you've been a wonderful audience. Thank you very much. So, Richard, well done. How are you feeling after your first stand-up gig? Feeling really good. Um, I was looking forward to being on later, but everyone was so good before me. It actually made me quite nervous, but I think it went really well, and the crowd was brilliant. Loved it. Uh, what, what did you get out of the course that gave you some courage tonight? I think what was, what was really nice was actually just writing the material. I really like like thinking about what I wanted to talk about, but writing it and trying to switch words around to try and make things funny, which like might not normally be funny. Yeah. And did you expect to do so well and enjoy it so much tonight? Uh, I really loved it. Um, I didn't know what to expect. I didn't know if things were going to be funny. Uh, I thought it would go quite well, and yeah, pretty pleased. And your uh, porno material went down quite well in front of your mum, I thought. <laughs> yeah, it did. <laughs> it was when my aunt, when I said I'm not going to demonstrate <laughs> me doing masturbation, she went, yes! <laughs> so was she did look relieved. <laughs> uh, so will you be doing more stand-up going forward? Yeah, I'd love to try my set on a, an audience who have no connection to me and, and see if the material actually works and then I'll go from there. Brilliant. Well done, you did an excellent job. Well done.